So the first time, because you posted uh, a Kickstarter and then it was pulled after, mm -hmm. I think, three weeks, was it? Uh, I don't know exactly how many weeks, um, but um, yeah, we, we had a bunch of really good things start to happen, that, and also we learned so much. The combination of both of those were saying, wait a minute, we can do this a lot better. Let's hold off for a few weeks, relaunch, and see what happens. Okay. And we were feeling pretty good about that stuff. Some of the things you know, that we've talked about, you know, David Hayter coming on board is amazing. We're super excited about that. Um, being able to reduce the goal um, uh, down to 750, that's amazing. Partnering up with great people, um, you know, with AMD. Um, uh, looking at uh, the response of people saying, I don't want to pay something that you want to get necessarily two hours worth of experience. We're yeah. like, yeah, we understand that. So we adjusted that. Um, and um, becoming a PlayStation 4 developer. These are all the kinds of things where we're going you know, also splitting up PayPal and Kickstarter, um, we had no idea of, I, I mean, I don't know, I, I don't want to say that we live in igloos because we're in Canada. I don't want to change, you know, but uh, we didn't realize how, I guess, popular Kickstarter was, and we ended up splitting our revenue. We raised actually about 300 videos. If you looked at the trends, it was actually okay, um, but because it was split, it made the Kickstarter look incredibly horrible. So, I wouldn't say horrible, but not as good as it should be. And um, so we thought we can do that better too. So we're, doing, we're fixing all that. And we got all these great announcements, so hopefully it'll be good. Okay. Were you at all disheartened? Because, I mean, you got a good response, but you didn't get like the... Uh, I mean, it's Eternal Darkness is, is like one of the cult favorites of the past, you know, of this century, basically. So were yeah. you disheartened at all that you didn't get like this overwhelming, like... Within a week, you get a million dollars. Did you expect that kind of response? Uh, we didn't know what to expect. Um, and um, no, not really. Uh, I, I don't think was I disheartened. No, I, I was uh, personally, if I was disheartened, we wouldn't be here. We're still here. Yeah. We're, we're doing this. We want to do it. Um, and we're hoping we can get the message across. And at the end of the day, if, if it for some reason this doesn't get funded, then it wasn't meant to be. Um, the, I think... Um, it was more of, wow, look how much we learned, look how many opportunities are coming up. This game needs to be made. And I think there's enough people behind it, and I think we're partnering up with the right people where it is gonna be made. Um, I feel very confident about that, time will tell. Um, you know, do I wish the first one did better? Actually, no, because we'd be in a worse position. Um, uh, we'd be already going down a path where we didn't have a chance to talk with all the partners that we're talking with now that are just going to make this whole experience uh, much better. Okay, so uh, just kind of from the outside, it seems like some of the people, some people's hesitation with supporting this is that your last couple of games, Two Human and X-Men Destiny, were, they weren't really that well received. Mm -hmm. um, and that kind of hurts the trust people have. Because you see something like Double Fine people just love Tim Schafer just unequivocally and they'll just give him money whenever he wants. Sure. So, I mean, how much do you think your last two games hurt you, and how do you regain that trust with people? Well, um, you know, I don't think anyone in this industry has got a flawless track record. I think, I think if you look at, I think if people looked at track records from all developers, um, um, there's some games that you know didn't perform that well, or people didn't like. And I, I think the way that I would say. Um, how could we regain that trust is, uh, and uh, we have learned, I, I've said some things I shouldn't have said, I get it, okay, my bad. Uh, we're focusing on, I'm focusing on the creative right now, uh, Sean and Paul are running the company, and um, we are looking to take all those lessons learned and to make a great game. And I think some of the problems that we encountered before, we've, the sting was so painful that no one wants to go back there. So, um, you know, I hope that that says to people, we get it. And, um, you know, that's really all I can say. Um, I really um, I really hope that people look at all the good games that we made, Legacy of Cain, and, you know, Eternal Darkness, Metal Gear Solid Twin Snakes, even some of our first games, uh, like Cyber Empires, that, you know, that were really early PC and Amiga days, it goes way back. You know, we made some great games too, and um, did did we make some games people didn't like that much? For sure. Am I am I do I apologize? And am I um, am I sorry for 
those impressions. It really, yeah, for sure. And you know, that's really um, not really much else we can do except own up to that and say, this is a new company it's structured to avoid those same problems and pitfalls. Mm -hmm. And uh, we hope people see that we believe in it, and we hope they believe in us, and we'll support the game. Okay. So last year, Kotaku had a pretty damning article. It was it contained about eight anonymous sources who talked about what it was like working at X-Men. Yeah. Uh, and it's impossible, I mean, you know, outside, and I have no idea if it was true or not. It wasn't. Uh, <laughs> but the, uh, the tough thing was that you didn't actually respond publicly for seven months. Yeah, um, yeah. How much do you think that that hurts not coming right out and addressing this stuff? Or did you just kind of think or hope that it would be like, oh, anonymous sources, I'm just going to kind of ignore this? Well, it's hard to tell, right? Um, so, in, in, um, you know, in, to be clear, um, when I say none of it was true, I mean all of the allegations. There's some random facts in there, whatever. Um, that's, that's neither here nor there. Um, and I don't know what impact it really had on anything. Um, but when you have anonymous sources, you're, the, only, the only thing that you can do is just come out and deny them. And we really, seriously, did not think people would take them as credible. But what we underestimated, I guess, is the churn of technology and the number of links and relinks and links and relinks that slowly builds up this credibility. It's like, people actually think that this happened. So the only way that we could address it, and we didn't really understand the full force of that until it became clear that a number of people were quoting this stuff. And I'm like, there's nothing here. And it's not only is it not correct, it's the exact opposite of what happened. So um, I think from a perspective of um, should I have come out sooner, I don't think anyone would have known. No one that I know knows. I remember I was just at E3 talking to the guys at Activision and they're like, that was unbelievable. And that was, that was completely the opposite of what happened. You loved that game. And I go, I know. And um, you know, so the bottom line is you know, the only thing, the only option I had, which is unfortunate, was to come out and say it's not true, and I can only hope that people see that for what it is. Um, if, it, it, the problem is, of course, with anonymous sources, you have to prove yourself innocent. It's not that you're being proved guilty, because there's no facts or evidence of anything. But people believed it. So, um, you know, look, that's not to say mistakes weren't made on that project, that's not what I'm saying. Um, but, you know, certainly, you know, I think if you talk to most of the people that worked during that time, they would have the exact opposite impression and be really happy with what happened during okay. that time. You know, of course, except they wish the game would have been better and turned out better, but yes. you know, that's par for the course sometimes, unfortunately. Yeah. So, I mean, as you just mentioned, there was mistakes made, and you've kind of said that in the oh, past. Yeah. Um, what kind of mistakes did, or like the biggest mistakes you made for X-Men, and how have you how is the structure of Precursor different than Silicon Knights was that you can avoid those same problems? Biggest mistakes for X-Men, that's a tough one. Um, so a lot of people don't know this, but I actually wasn't the director on X-Men. So I was, I was only for a very, very short time and then there was someone else directing it. Um, um, but I would say, um, I would say trying to make sure, so, Trying to make sure that um, we really um, understood things well enough to meet expectation of what we had the tools to do. So we had like Marvel and Activision and Silicon Knights all working together, uh, trying to make something great. And it turns out that we underestimated um, how um, how challenging uh, that environment can be. And it's not everyone tried, and every it's just understanding that nor that was the kind of the first time you know we had ever done something like that and we kind of stepped into it bravely and in some ways uh, naively and now I think we have a deeper respect in what it takes to make a game like that and we would do a better job. Publishers are kind of not that important anymore. Yep. Like what is the best thing about not working with a publisher? I would say flexibility in being able to um, um, be really able to take community input like never before.